Amen. Wonderful. Let's go back to Psalm 119. I thought, let's see if those kids can run all their teachers off. I wonder how effective you guys are. <laughs> oh, man. Praise the Lord. How many of you paid attention to Pastor's Bible that he uses? If you haven't paid attention to that, you should. He really does try to use another one, but he always keeps coming back. And I understand that completely, but it's way beyond it should have been used years. <laughs> if you haven't looked at it, you might want to come up sometime and don't stop him when he's preaching, but <laughs> get a good look at it because it's a blessing to see. I actually have a, I have a message in my Bible. It's written out right here on the cover, and it's called um, ABCs of Faith Promise Giving by Dr. Don Sisk. Maybe you know that name, Dr. Don Sisk, one of the one of the greats of missions giving of the years, and so on. <clears throat> And um, it was in another person's Bible, written out. Um, if I could think of his name, I'd say it. It's not coming to me, an old timer. Anyway, <clears throat> his Bible was on a, on a pew right in front of me, and it was opened, and, and this outline was in it. And he was out shaking hands with folks and, and so on. And so I looked at it, and I went, hmm, <laughs> that's something kind of precious. And so I grabbed my pen and wrote quickly and wrote the entire message here until before he got back. He didn't, know, he didn't have a clue I did that. But anyway, <clears throat> there's something about Bibles <clears throat> that folks have that's got some unique things about them. And uh, praise the Lord for that. <clears throat> some good testimonies this morning. Was there somebody who wished that you would have said something but didn't? I'll give you an opportunity to do that. Boy, that hand went up quick. Yes, sir. Amen. That's good. So I just, uh, I was privileged to be born into a house where my dad was a pastor, my granddad was a pastor, but it's since gone on, and I, I have their Bibles now that were precious to theirs, and can read their notes, and just the things that they were sending me and underlining and highlighting, and uh, that's, that was a blessing to me. I have my own Bible, but I often look at theirs. Mm. Yes. Hmm. That's good. That's good. Mrs. McLean, we're talking about all this. I don't know if you got to hear any of this morning, but we're, all, we're talking about how valuable the Bible is to us and uh, certain testimonies about the Bible that they have and how valuable it is. You might have one. Yeah. 
Mm. 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 That is probably not a testimony I'm going to hear anybody else say. <laughs> that takes on a whole new meaning. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is established. <laughs> Amen. Good. Anybody else? I could tell there's a few of you. Yes. I have so much that I want to say about that. That is just precious. What's really precious is that there's that many in the family that wants it. That's awesome. That is awesome. Amen. Anybody else? Take a little bit more time tonight or this afternoon than we did this morning. But that's good. How about any of you younger ones? Any testimonies of your, of your Bible that you have? How precious it is to you? Yeah, there's a young one. <laughs> Mm. So saved in Israel. Wow. You were on a trip or how did that? I was there, but I lived in Israel. Okay.
Amen. Amen. That's just awesome. Thanks for sharing that with us. Okay, um, let's continue. We're in Psalm 119, and we ended at 58. <clears throat> Makes me want to say something about one. Did I, did I cover 38 this morning? Did I do verse 38? I don't think I did. Um, let's look at 38, <clears throat> and then we'll skip over past 58. But 38, because of so much of what was just said, this verse really applies. Establish thy word unto thy servant who is devoted to thy fear. Establish. Establish. Um, I mentioned to you this morning that when my mom got saved, as far as I know, it was the first one to break the generational sin uh, in, in both of our family lines that I know of, her her maiden name Baxter and, and mine, obviously, Marwelly. And um, <clears throat> what a blessing that, that that was then. But to hear these testimonies. But the thing that really grabs me with all these testimonies is the responsibility afterwards. You know, praise the Lord, you've got the stories now. But what are you doing to make a story for the one under you? What are you doing to make a story like, like your grandpa or your dad is, is making for you? Um, <clears throat> how you handle your Bible can make the story for your children, can make the story for your grandchildren. Amen? And uh, opportunities for that. So it's not just the Word of God. It's establish thy word. It's, we have the responsibility to, to realize it was good for my parents and their parents and their parents and their parents. It's good for me, and it's good for those after me also. Amen? And we have the responsibility to make sure that that holds strong. So 38 is a really good one. Establish thy word unto thy servant who's devoted to thy fear. And then <clears throat> um, verse number 58 is where we ended. So go over to 89. <clears throat> 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. <clears throat> I grew up um, in a in a contractor's um, home, um, not grew up, but, but was in one ever since I met Shelly. Um, her dad was a builder for 58 years. <clears throat> and you've probably heard me say that when I met her and was wanting to uh, court her, um, he made it real clear that I could do that, but I had to work for him if I was going to do that. And so um, I was good with that. I went to work with him and worked with him basically uh, all of my life, um, along with the ministries that God had us in and so on. And so I really enjoy the, the construction end of things, and especially when you get into some of the older homes. In some of the older homes, <clears throat> if you're going to take it apart, like I just finished taking down an old barn um, that's at our property. We, when we moved out of the RV because of the black mold, I know you folks know that story, um, we moved into a 125-year-old little 900-square-foot farmhouse that we thought we were just going to paint the walls and put down carpet and live. Well, that, that didn't happen. It ended up being a complete remodel, um, everything. And <clears throat> as I was tearing some things out, tearing some walls down to be able to, to put in a closet because the old homes didn't have closets. Why didn't the old homes have closets, by the way? That's the answer. There wasn't a need for them. Didn't have that many clothes. There really wasn't a need for them. And what about now? I mean, now the closets are the size of bedrooms, <laughs> literally. And they put islands in the middle of the closet to be able to organize all the clothes on and so on and so on. Uh, I heard a, uh, heard a commercial coming here, uh, actually, uh, is, is while I was listening to golf. I know I'm weird. I listen to golf. But anyway... This is a real exciting time for golf, by the way. Well, I was listening to golf, and the commercial was dealing with, with uh, contractors that they specialize in building closets. I mean, people put such an emphasis on closets today that there's builders. That's all they do. It's just closets. 
and they've got it all figured out how to make it all as effective as I can. And this young lady came on and she said, it's my retreat space. Going into my closet is my retreat. I'm able to forget about life in my closet and what a relaxing environment that it is. And I thought, wow, <laughs> it didn't used to be that way. Uh, but now, you know, now we need the big closets for all the clothes that we don't need. Right? I mean, we have winter clothes and summer clothes and fall clothes and spring clothes and clothes that are in a bag that hopefully one day we'll lose enough weight to be able to get back into them. And <laughs> on and on it goes. You know, all these clothes. And <clears throat> we need big closets to be able to do that. But, but in the process of tearing down those walls to be able to put in a somewhat of a closet <laughs> in that little house, um, I found those, you know, the old spikes that they used to use. Not the 16 penny like what we grew up with, but the ones before the 16 penny, the old real spikes. You know, they're quite a bit longer. They're almost as big around as my finger. And when you try to pull boards apart with those nails in them, I mean, it doesn't matter how many tricks that you know. It's just hard. Very, very difficult to get those apart. And it makes me think of that every time I read that verse. Uh, um, Forever, O Lord, thy word is established in heaven. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Forever. It's nailed down. And it's not nailed down with trim nails. Amen? It's not nailed down with little skinny nails that are going to come apart. It's nailed down forever. Praise the Lord for the assurance of knowing that the word of God stands. And then 97. In fact, let me do something real quick. Um, you got your, I know some of you are marking. I'm going to read the verses that I have highlighted, then I'll come back because I'm not getting through all of them. I can already tell you that's not going to happen. All right, so 97 is one, and then 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And then 111, thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. That was a theme verse at camp not too long ago. And then verse 113, I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. 130. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. 133. Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. 140. Thy word is very pure. Therefore thy servant loveth it. 159. Consider how I love thy precepts. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy loving kindness. 160, thy word is true from the beginning and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. 161, princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. 165, great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. 167, my soul hath kept the testimonies, thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. And 174, I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord, and thy law is my delight. Once again, there's lots more verses in Psalm 119 that are dealing with the word of God. I don't know if it's like 80 or 85% of them uh, deal with the word of God or the law in one way or the other. But these are ones that I just have marked uh, in my Bible specifically uh, for being able to highlight them to people when I get the opportunity to. And so back to 97, um, oh, how love I thy law. It's my meditation all the day. I've actually preached that verse here about the relationship of love you or I love you or oh, how I love you. And the fact that the word of God uh, has the power to take us through circumstances far deeper than just love you will take you through. We, don't, we need more than a love you relationship with the Bible, amen? We need more than an I love you relationship with the Bible. We, le we need an oh, how love I thy law. And some folks ask from time to time, well, how do I know? How do I know if my relationship with the Bible is love you or I love you or oh, how love I thy law? How do I know which one I have? The rest of the verse. It is my meditation all the day. I think about it all the time. Kind of like 
think back when you first met your now spouse and how you fell in love and how crazy that that love was. I mean, it was couldn't spend enough time together, uh, hated it when you had to say goodbye, uh, wrote letters back and forth all the time. Some of you probably still have some of those love letters and you reread them and reread them and on and on it goes. It's, it's you think about them all the time. You can't get them off your mind. Well, how are we with the word of God in regards to that? Do we, do we run all of our decisions through the word of God? Before we buy something, do we, do, we, do we run it through the filter of the word of God? Before we allow ourselves to look at something uh, for an extended period of time, do we run it through the filter of the word of God? Before I purchase, before I think, before I drink something, on and on it goes. It's my meditation. Before I decide on someone being my friend, everything about it, we need to filter it through the word of God. Amen? Say, how do, how do I know that many verses? Well, there's a lot of verses for all of them, but there's one that covers it all. What would be the one verse that covers, I mean, you have a hard time coming up with something that this verse doesn't cover. Anybody know what it is? Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are, and the list goes on. I don't have time to go through it because I'm back here, okay? But Philippians 4, 8, if you need a verse um, to be able to use as a filter to decide what to do or not to do, that one, actually, that one works really well. 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Why is it a lamp and a light? Why isn't it just a light? Because a lamp glows the area right around where you're standing. A lamp doesn't show you the future, it shows you the now. It shows you where you are right now. We need to know where we are now in our sin condition before a holy God. We need to know where we are now in our fellowship with a holy God. Amen? We need to know where we are right now in our relationship with the Holy God. Why? Because the way you are right the time that Jesus comes to get you is how you'll meet him forever. There's no time to change. There's no time between here and there to say, oh, man, Father, I'm, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. To... Done. You're taking it to heaven. You're taking it to the judgment. Right? And so the lamp shows you where you are. This book as a lamp unto my feet, will illuminate where I am in my relationship. If I were to die right now, how would I meet him face to face? It will illuminate that. But not only that, it's a light unto my path. It shows me where I am and where I'm going. I don't know about you, but I'm glad. I've got 100% confidence of knowing where I'm going. Amen? Amen? It's not a question. I'm not wondering about it. I, I'm, not, I'm not even concerned about it because I know 100%. I know where I'm going. Praise the Lord. I don't know of any other situation where that's the case. People ask me all the time and say, how do, you, how do you keep up with your schedule? How do you know where you're going? I say, I don't. They say, well, you have to. I said, I, I, I do to the part that I can, but I know that it changes all the time. I, I don't know. The schedule changes all the time. When, you, when you're going to be in a different church pretty much every week of your life, somewhere around North America, things change all the time. So I can't be positive where I'm going to be. I called Shelley last night and was telling her about something to do with the schedule, and she said, stop. I said, what do you mean? She said, you've got me so confused. <laughs> I, 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 don't know, I don't know what it is that you're saying. It, it's, I said, yeah, it is kind of confusing. And so it, it just is. But this is not confusing. I know where I'm going. Amen? Amen? Heaven is settled. I know that one. Nothing's going to change it. Nothing. What a blessing. Isn't that amazing to say that? Nothing is going to change it. You can't change it. The world can't change it. Sin can't even change it. It's settled on the cross. Nothing can change it. I know where I'm going, 100% guaranteed. Nothing can change it. Glory to God. What a blessing. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 111. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever. For they are the rejoicing of my heart. That's the one that was a theme verse for camp a few years ago. And Brother McLean brought out the testimonies as treasure. Treasuring, what was that theme? Treasuring truth, right? Treasuring truth. One of my favorite themes of, of all the ones that I've been involved in for that many years. But thy, thy testimonies, thy treasure, have I taken as a heritage. Oh, those of you that have that blessing... I've taken, that fan is in the, 
Do you find that? Yeah, it's, it's right there. It's, it's okay. Thy testimonies have I taken as a heritage. Those of you who have the heritage that you're able to take and you're able to pass on, you are blessed. You are so blessed. If you have a mom and dad, brother, sister, someone in your family that has brought the heritage to you, spiritually speaking, and now you have the opportunity to pass it on to others, what an incredible treasure that that is. You see, a treasure is something that you, you, you respect it. You, you treat a treasure different than other things. If I were to come into your house, everybody in this room has something somewhere in your house that is your treasure. Might not have a monetary value to it, or it might. Might not, or it might. But to you, because of where it came from, it is priceless to you. You wouldn't sell it. You wouldn't give it away. And the way that you treat it dictates how much of a treasure it is. The way you treat it. I mean, it might be some, something that if somebody wanted to see, you'd say, well, yeah, you can, but hold on a second, and you'd give them gloves. They'd have to put gloves on before they could handle whatever it is because you don't want the oils from the hand to be able to get on it. There's, there's something that maybe you would bring out and you would, you would lay it down and you'd say, please don't touch it, but there you, you can see it, whatever that it is. The way you handle it dictates how much you treasure it. Are you with me? Thy testimonies have I taken as a heritage. The way we handle this dictates how much we value it. The way we handle it. The way we care for it. The way we respect it. The places we allow it to be and not allow it to be. Amen? It's a treasure. 113. I hate vain thoughts. And they're everywhere around us. Vain is empty, right? That's all Hollywood is. Everything to do with Hollywood is just empty. It's nothing that's going to have any lasting value effect from it whatsoever. And it drives me nuts when Hollywood tries to be spiritual. And they don't have a spiritual bone in their body. When Hollywood tries to sing godly hymns. And they don't even know what amazing grace is. They don't even know what the rugged cross is, but they try to sing it so that they can make millions of dollars on the song. Drives me nuts. Vain. That's all vain. But praise the Lord, thy law. Do I love. Love that verse. 130. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. I'll stop on that one because my time is up. But I have a little note next to this one that says, open it like an anticipated present. Remember, when you were younger and you, you saw that one, there's a whole bunch of presents under the tree, but that one was just about the right size. You went over when mom and dad wasn't looking and you, and you picked it up. It's about the right weight. You shook it, and it, it, it could possibly, that could, maybe, maybe that's what you asked for. You know, of all the other ones, and they'll all be precious, but that one might be the one. And when you have the opportunity to open it up, ah, uh, nothing quite like it, right? When you open this book, there's nothing like it. Amen? Amen? There is nothing like it. There never will be anything like it. This isn't something that's going to be, become outdated sometime. This isn't something that's going, to, that's going to change ever. It's as powerful today as it ever has been, and it will continue to be that powerful forever. Glory to God. Open it. as a treasure. Open it as it's a believe it situation. It, it says in 33, order my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Believe it in detail. 
detail. Some people see in detail, some people don't. You agree with that? Some people do. I mean, they, they see, you say, what are you talking about? Well, have you ever been somewhere and you talked to your wife about it or her husband said, did you see that such and such in, in the store or at somebody's house or whatever? And they go, that wasn't in there. Oh, yes, it was. It was there. I saw it because you saw it in detail and he just saw stuff. You know, no, no telling what he saw, but he didn't see the detail. And some of you, you know, you sit down at the, at the dining room table and you look around and, and maybe, you, maybe you see a, a cabinet that's got a crystal in it or whatever and you, you looked at it, but then you looked at it again and you thought, that's not just crystal. That's, that's the real stuff. There's something special about that. Or maybe it's a, a teacup collection on a shelf somewhere. Or maybe it's a golf ball collection. There's a lot of guys that have hundreds of golf balls because of the, of the logos that's on them or whatever. And you, you didn't just look at it. It was like, wow. Wow. You looked at it in detail. Let me encourage you as you open this book. Look at it in detail. As you're reading it, don't just read it like another verse. Read it in color. Amen? That's, that's why I tell churches all over, if you haven't sent your pastor to the Holy Land, you need to. I don't, have you guys gone? Yeah, you guys went. You, every church needs to send their preacher because they'll come back and preach the Bible in color. Changes everything. Read it in detail. Read it in color. Amen? Our Father, we could go on and on, obviously, with these verses. They're all so precious, so powerful, and thank you for the good testimonies uh, today, and I pray, I pray that the goal has been accomplished, and that is to love the book more than we did when we started this morning. Love it more. Cherish it more. Read it more. Memorize it more, share it more, treasure it with our very being. Mm. Brother Tricky, lead us in the B-I-B-L-E. B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E, Bible. Amen. God bless your hearts. You got something? Yes, I just have to say you listen to golf. Like you hear things. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know what the sound is. Just an occasional smack, I guess, of what we heard. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing what that uh, with us today, Brother Merrill. It makes me think of that verse: "More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb." Thank you. Praise the Lord for His Word. All right, I have nothing else. Uh, even prayer for one another this week. Prayer for Camp Yes, and uh, I think the new Aruda baby is back there. So we got to go have a look. Congratulations to Ricky and Delfina. Welcome. Thank you for being here today. You are dismissed. <clears throat>